This is the Persons of Interest podcast, diving into careers, personal stories, life lessons, and more, featuring interviews with interesting people doing interesting things. And now, here's your host, Derek Dockett. I got a real person of interest in this episode, all the way from central Illinois. It's been a long time. Not, I guess, yeah, it's been a few years since I actually have actually been face-to-face with this gentleman, but it's good to catch up with now the Associate AD of Communications at Illinois State University, Mike Williams, MC Willie. What's up, man? <laughs> Not much. How are you doing, Derek? I'm good. It's good to see you. It's good to talk to you, man. It's, uh, it's you been too. a while. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know how, you know, in your former life in dealing with collegiate athletics, you know how, uh, how crazy it is, especially at this time of year. So, uh, it's it's good to talk to you. Get a little break from uh, all the uh, the constant moving around of things we <laughs> going on right now. Well, I appreciate you setting aside the time. Um, I, you're right. Like I've, I was, we we're talking off air that I've uh, touched base with a few of the folks work, working in the industry. Of course, I don't lose connection with a lot of folks and still keep in touch with people. And I know it's super busy in February. Is you guys are knee deep in the winter sports season. I think indoor track is going to wrap up soon and basketball we all know is going on but uh um i think for you are you still the main contact for football gymnastics you have anything else on your plate yeah i've got both tennises as well so okay for for the month of march really march to mid-april it is it's a lot for me because football comes back online with spring ball yeah and then gymnastics is you know they're wrapping up their conference tournaments mid-march but then we've had a lot of success here in the last couple of years with gymnasts going to regionals and even to nationals. And then uh, tennis is go, you know, until late April, early May. So that stretch is is, is quite busy for me. Um, but uh, we're, we'll, we'll get it all taken care of. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I love working with all those teams and and uh, enjoy kind of getting to know those student athletes and coaches and being around them as much as I can. I've talked to a few folks in the uh, podcast um, that work in college athletics, some um, various different levels. Um, but I think the one thing that probably sets you apart that I'm curious about is um, how you do it being a father. Um, it's not a nine to five job. I think the folks that we know uh, that work in the in the industry know that, you know, football games are on weekends, um, you know, afternoon, sometimes evening games. But you know, sporting events, if you're not hosting a conference championship, um, it's not a nine to five gig. Uh, but you've been able to sort of figure that out a little bit and with, with the two girls and, and make things work. And I, I, it's pretty cool that they come out to games often and get to hang with the cheerleaders. What's been the key to uh, keeping fatherhood afloat uh, and working in sports information at the college level? I mean, for one, I've had really good mentors in my career that I've asked a lot of those same questions as how did you do it? Um, And, and I've been able to lean on those guys throughout my, throughout my time working in, in college sports, but it's, it's really about making a conscious effort to, to, to make that time and to find that time. And, you know, I, you know, one of my things is, and I'm always taking work home, but I always make sure that when I do get home, I try not to touch it until after the girls are in bed. You know, if that means I'm staying up till midnight working on something fine, but I try not to do it when I'm at home so I can at least get to spend some time with them and and see them, ask them how their days were. You know, my daughter is, my oldest daughter is, is big into competitive cheer and softball right now. So I also coached her team last year. So okay. I was trying, pretty much any time that I had left, I was either running her to practices <laughs> where I was going to practices with her and helping coach. So it's, um, I try, you know, the, the time is tough and then especially, you know, in this season, you know, the crossover seasons that we call up in uh, college athletics, they're really tough because, you know, I did three gymnastics or I did a gymnastics meet and then two tennis meets just last weekend. So your whole weekend can be shot yeah. with an event, but 
you go there for three hours and then you make sure when you go home, you're not still working and you're still not doing those things for those three hours. So that's kind of how I go about doing it. Um, that's how I try to prioritize it. And then in the summers, when things do calm down a little bit and things don't aren't as crazy, then I'm trying to be more, more present and I'm trying to go on some family vacations and spend some time together. Or, you know, with my daughter, I was coaching her all last summer. Right. So I was with, you know, two, three games a week and practices and everything else. So we were able to spend that time together, which was really nice. How's uh, coaching been? Coach. How did how did you like that experience? I I realized. I mean, it's it's we're talking ten U softball here, yeah. so it's yeah. not it's not too uh, too crazy. Now the cheer stuff, I don't go anywhere near. <laughs> luckily, luckily, one of my uh, one of my best friends from college, my roommate, uh, his wife is. Um, a coach at a gym here in town and, and, and for years had been talking to my, to my wife about, you know, Adeline really enjoys cheer. She did a lot of clinics here at ISU, did some clinics at our high school, uh, in our hometown that we're living in. So she really liked cheer, but it never got involved. And Marissa finally bugged us and bugged us and bugged us enough to get her, to get her in there. Um, and she did it last year for the first time and just fell in love. That's so awesome. it's, it's become, a whole different thing. But, you know, for me, I, I'm a supporter there. You know, I'm, I'm basically a super fan, you know, all the dads dress up. We, we look like idiots and, you know, <laughs> loud and crazy and try to support our girls. But then on the, on the softball side, you know, I, I can, I can help there a little bit more. Um, now this year she's going into a travel ball and I'm just basically a bench coach. Um, okay. I'm just, helping out with the scorebook, which I know how to do very well from my years working in sports information. Um, and, you know, just helping the girls get on and off the field. So I'm not actually coaching this year, okay. which I think will be actually better for me um, because there were a lot of nights where I was trying to figure out, okay, what do I do? What do I, you know, I was worried about lineups and things. And then I'd have to always kick myself. Hey, these girls are 10. As long as they're having fun and they're learning a little right. something, we're doing the right things here. So. Uh, but it was, it was great. I, I wouldn't have traded it. Um, my wife was our pitching coach cause she pitched in high school. So, she, and these girls do, you know, fast pitch now. So I didn't know how to touch that at all. <laughs> uh, so she handled that and we worked together on it and, and it was a good family time, you know, yeah. um, it was, it was a good time to be together. And with me being so busy and my wife's a teacher, so she's obviously very busy with her schedules, um, at, at the high school. So that summertime was actually really, really nice. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes this year, um, you know, with it being a little bit different and, and honestly more intense. A lot more say, yeah. with travel ball stuff. Yeah, going to step up the competition a little bit there, I assume, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, so I guess as now we talked, I mentioned at the, the, the onset here that you just recently got the, the promotion to the associate AD communication but you've been leading the department for, you know, a number of years there. And I, I almost think you sort of have a Mike Williams communications tree of your own now. Like you've got some folks that have gone on and uh, done some other things that started out as GAs under you and, and working in the in the industry. Um, I can think of some folks off the top of my head, like Shelby and Zach Wadley and, and, and kids like that. But what is the one thing that you try to instill? Because the one thing I remember the best from from working at the Valley and being around you guys and what you guys had is you always had a good stable of GAs. And they always were like, they were working. Like they weren't there to just sort of like shadow. They were given responsibilities to do. And that sort of seems to be the the Illinois State communications way of doing it. It seems like that's been that way for years. I think it was that way for you when you probably were in that role. What's been that, 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 I guess the process of getting those GAs up to speed and, and how you mentor them to, you know, figure out if this is something they want to do in the long run. Yeah. I, and, and it kind of goes back to the way I was taught with, with Todd Cobra when he first hired me. And, and it goes back probably even farther than that with Kenny Mossman, who went on to a great career at Oklahoma after he left here at Illinois state. Um, it's, it's more so about giving them a toolbox of, of things that they can use, whether or not they stay in collegiate sports or not. Um, and, and it's changed. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. even when I first got into the business, you know, I, 
I, my first internship was in 2004. So I, no you know, social media. Years now. <laughs> yeah, no, no social media, even websites, you know, and the yeah. way they worked was, was way different. We were still using fax machines back then. So <laughs> like it, it, it's, it's definitely changed, but I tell even our interns and, and especially our GAs, like I want to give them an opportunity to own whatever it is that they're doing. And, and, and now in, especially in collegiate sports, there's so many different ways our GAs can go, you know, I mean, CSC or co- formerly known as COSIDA, I'm, I'm very involved with college sports communicators and they just expanded to include creatives and video okay. and, uh, you know, designers and graphic designers and all kinds of things, because we all have to do that stuff at some right. point in time. So what's interesting now for me, whereas before I was just making sure that somebody could come in and write a sentence and handle some game <laughs> notes and, and have enough of a personality to deal with media and coaches. Now I'm trying to figure out, okay, it really takes me a full year with a GA to figure out what their passion is. You know, I, I've got a second year GA that's getting ready to graduate. That's actually taken over our women's basketball duties. Um, and he's, he's extremely talented on the social media side of things. So there's a part of me that really wants to foster and grow that part for him. But yet there's still parts of me that are like, hey, we still got to do kind of the old school day-to-day right, right. SID stuff and make sure that that's getting taken care of as well. Um, but I also know that he could go, you know, when he goes looking for a job here in May after he graduates and there's tons of collegiate creative jobs that aren't necessarily sports information related um, that he can get into and, and, and have a long career on if that's what he wants to do. He can take that and work for three, four years in college athletics and go do something in the private sector. You yeah. know, it, it's, 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 it's all about equipping them with a work ethic because I think no matter what you do, uh, I've tried to instill that in our people here. And, and the, the job is tough. The hours are long. The pay is not good. We all know what, what the, you know, the hangups in, in working yeah. as, as a staff member in college athletics can be. But if you have a work ethic and you're willing to learn from mistakes and continue to improve in whatever it is that you're passionate about, you're going to be able to take that somewhere. And that's kind of what I've told them. I tell that to our interns that work for us. We're lucky to have a great relationship with the School of Communication here at ISU. Um, uh, Tom LaMonica, who you know, you know, helps run that system and, and provides us with really good interns every year. Some that turn into GAs, some that never work in college athletics ever again. <laughs> but it's, it's just working with them to find out, hey, what are you good at? What do you like to do? Is it photography? Is it writing? Is it graphic design? And then trying to put them in places of success with regards to what those skill sets are. Um, and because we need all the help we can get. Right. If I get an intern that comes in and says, hey, I really like doing social media stories and stuff on Instagram. Okay, that's great. You come to the basketball game, you do my game in-game story. I can put somebody else on my Twitter feed and then I can worry about handling media, you know, and we can piecemeal the thing together because the job's not as easy as it used to be. It used to be a one-man job. It's just not a yeah. one-woman job. I mean, it's just not that anymore. Um, you need help and and nobody can do everything on their own. It's 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 branched out and become this whole new ball game. So I try to find people first and foremost that have a passion for working in sports because that always helps. Um, and then that's somebody that's just going to be, that's going to work hard and be willing to learn. I can teach you everything else. You know, I, I figured that out. We have people that can teach you to be a better graphic designer or a photographer or a writer or whatever else. The actual skill set's easy. The attitude and the mindset's not. So I got to try to find that first and then teach them the other skills and cultivate them while they're here. And then hopefully by the time they leave, if it's a GA in two years, they're ready to go do whatever it is, whether it's in sports or whether it's in the public sector doing, you know, something else. And we've had pretty good success with that. I, you know, I still talk to a lot of our former GAs and that was honestly kind of the, one of the, the fun things about when I made the announcement of the promotion was just to see who sent messages and who sent texts. And it was 
everything from interns that first started when I first came back in 2009 after my two years at Indiana State to Roger Cushman, who was the first ever SID at this university who I've gotten to know over the years, who's now retired and, you know, living, living in warmer weather, it's awesome. he te- you know, he sent a note. So it's, it's all about building relationships and working with people. And, and that's the best part of this job to me. Is, right, is- you, you, you hit on something I was just going to lead into. You said the word relationships hmm. and I was wondering, so you, along with everyone, most of the other folks that I still keep in touch with from my time in the Valley are pretty much the people that are like, the, like, if there, if the Mount Rushmore could have just like several people on it because of their longevity and because of the way they do the job, um, it's impressive. Um, I don't know, like you, Mike Kern, Jack Watkins. I mean, just so many people that have just done it so long. But when you hear the people talk about, you know, the, the struggles about working in college athletics and specifically in sports information, um, that to me goes out of the window because of people like you and Mike and Jack, because you figure out a way to keep doing it. You've done it for so long. How? How you, and you talked about time management. I know that's a key to it at the beginning of it. How have you done it for so long? Because I can tell you like, heck, I only lasted eight years in the Valley before I was sort of like, I don't want to say I got bored, but just another opportunity popped up. But you've been stable there. You've made it work and you've, you know, cultivated those relationships with, you know, the GAs, interns, coaches, it seems like that's like, I don't want to say this is the perfect fit for you. And I know you're from Central Illinois, so I know that's one reason too, but how in the world have you been able to do it for so long? I, I think for me, it's, it's been trying to stay consistent no matter what I was doing, whether it was the work, whether it was the relationships, whether it was the way I deal with people across campus, whatever it is, is just being even keeled and being consistent the whole way out. Um, and I've honestly learned a lot about that from our head football coach who I've worked with now for nice. 15 Okay. Um, coach back and I have become very close over the years. When I first came back um, as an assistant at the time in 2009, when I was working at Indiana State for two years as an assistant, um, got the opportunity to come back to ISU. Um, and that's the one thing I've always loved about Coach Spack is that high. I've seen him get mad. I've seen him get really <laughs> upset, but in in public spaces, in front of media, in front of everybody, he's always just even. Yeah. And 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 I've had that. Nobody, if anybody in that has worked in sports as long as I have, and and there's certainly people even in our league that have worked longer, like Rick Kindhart. Yeah. And, and, you know, a bunch of other guys uh, over the years, some of that have retired, which is really weird that uh, <laughs> as we're now retiring, I'm like, man, you guys aren't that old and I'm not that old, am I? That you guys are getting out of the business. But um, there's just a consistency to the to the way they work. Um, and and they seem to just kind of keep an even keel. People yeah. change, coaches change, administrators change. It's just the way college athletics works. And, and there's been times, I mean, I, I've gone through some really weird situations here in my time as the chief communicator at Illinois state, um, whether it be with administrative changes, unfortunately, um, you know, we had a a tragic plane crash that we, that we all had to deal with and go through. Um, but that's been the one thing that I've ever heard when I've talked to people, they're like, you're always just solid. You're always just there. And I think that has a lot to do with how I was raised and, and how my parents uh, taught me. Uh, our, our family has always been that way. My dad is very stoic, very, you know, that's just how he's always been. And he worked at the same company for 40 years. Okay. So it, it, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a, a loyalty factor to it. Um, there's a little bit of a factor of what else am I going to do? I've literally spent 20 years of my professional life doing one thing. Um, that's obviously changed a lot in that time, but I've still only done the one thing for 20 years. So there's, there's, there's a part of me that if I leave, what would I do? Where would I go? What would I do? And I've, and, and there's been people that have, I know a lot of good people that have worked at power five schools, 
that have left in their mid forties, early fifties and done complete career changes just because the business has changed and they didn't want to do the day to day rat race of, of everything. Um, and, and I think that takes a lot of courage because there's, I've had a lot of those conversations internally and with my wife about what would I do next? You know, what, what would that look like? Could I go work at a country financial or a state farm and work in corporate PR? I'm sure I could. I, I have the skills. I know that, but would I be happy doing it? You know, right. would I be, would, would I be fulfilled in, in, in the work? Um, and I don't know because I've never done it. And I don't know, and I'm and I'm glad that I don't have to right now. That was what was um, has been so interesting, uh, you know. Here in the last, I'd say at least a year, with Dr. Jerry Beggs as their interim AD, and she's changed some staff over and adding Paul Cabis as their deputy AD, and and some other and a lot of really good conversations. Just where do I fit? How do you guys see me? How can I be an asset? And every AD, every person that I've worked with from an administrator has had a different idea on that. And I think that's the same anywhere in college athletics. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes that idea or that that answer is not what you want. That yeah. answer is they, they don't see a lot of value or they don't see a lot of uh, ways that you can help them. But I think over 15 years now, um, since being back and in 12 years and sitting in the assistant AD chair, They've seen that. They've seen that I've been able to get through some really tough situations with a steady hand. Um, and I haven't done that alone. I've done that with staff. I've done that with a lot of phone calls to people across the country. I've done that with uh, good mentors. And, and, and it's not, it's, that's, that's all going back to this. It's all about relationships. It's the whole reason why I got into the public relations field in the beginning. Now, I started my career wanting to be the next great American sports writer. You know, I thought we were going to work for a newspaper. Man, I'm glad I didn't make that. <laughs> I was say, yeah. Um, you would have been making a career change at this point in yeah, time. Yeah, that, that career change would have happened a long time ago. Had That would have been the difference. But when I got into public relations, that relations, that relationships, part of it is what I liked about this so much because I could still write. I could still st tell stories. I could still do all of those things that, you know, a, a sports writer could do in this role. But it, there is so much about working with the media and working with your student athletes and coaches and people across campus and alumni and season ticket holders and all yeah. the different people that I run into and speak with on a, on a regular basis. So it's just so important. And for me, you know, I love this place where I met my wife, it's where I went to school. You know, I don't know that had I stayed at Indiana State and maybe gone somewhere else and not had that opportunity to come back here in 2009, uh, that, that my story wouldn't be completely different. And I may not have ever, I may have only worked in sports for five, six, seven years, as opposed to now almost 20. Right. Um, so, you know, God has a plan for sure. You know, you I, I fully believe that. And, and, and I've had a lot of weird things happen here in my personal life. Uh, you know, it's been, I look back and, and there's been crazy things that have happened, but the one constant has always been the work. It's, I've always enjoyed it. I've never, there's been hard days and there's been days when I wanted to quit and go do something else. But usually that lasts for a couple of days or a week or a month. Uh, and then it, and it kind of fades again and something good happens and you get renewed. And that's why I like about this sports and working in sports is especially at a place like Illinois state, who's been pretty successful across the board in a lot of different sports. There's always something to look forward to. There's yep. always something to, to be excited about. And that's, I think why I've stayed in it as long as I have and, and continue to be excited to want to continue to do it, you know, for the foreseeable future. I think one of the keys also too is that I remember that I always enjoyed was that no day was the same. Um, even when you, you know, we, we didn't have any sports so in the conference office, you know, it, for us, it was all about, you know, it was event based. It was conference championship. It was tournament time. Um, but it was always something different that was going to be, okay, how do I maneuver this and make this happen? But then when you did get to the, you know, the tournament, the, the championship, whatever it was, whatever the event that was coming up, um, 
then you knew it was really going to be a different day. And when it was game day, you never knew what you were going to see. So uh, I'm glad you said that. That 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 sums it up pretty well. And actually, it's it's pretty in common with some of my colleagues that work in school PR. Um, a lot of similarities of, of talking about, you know, why they love it, why they're there, and being a rock, being consistent. Uh, and you said, you know, your connections with student athletes and coaches. Similar thing. A lot of folks talk about their connections with just students and teachers and and staff and realizing they're doing it for their why kind of thing. So it's um, and it's and funny to know is that like me, I went from the Valley to a school district. A lot of folks have actually gone from mm-hmm. school PR or from college athletics to uh, doing K-12 school communications, too. So a lot of similarities I hear in what you just described in your answer to what I've heard from some folks that work um, in, in school communications as well. So um, behind you is something that I have to ask about. Because I knew that you like were into it, but I had no idea the the level that now it's almost like it's extreme based yeah. on, on the the amount. But I had no idea that you were. I guess I call you a bobblehead collector. Are you a bobblehead I aficionado? Am. I am. You know, it's it's weird. Now, okay, because, before you answer, before you answer, yeah. do you seek them out, or is it just oh, there's a the White Sox game, they have a bobblehead, I got to get to the game, or is, are you like? going to eBay looking for them? Are you to that level? No, I'm not to that level. Okay. Um, you know, I honestly, the majority of it, it just started, you know, working in college sports, you run into them. Right. You know, Bally give, gave out one a couple years ago of, of the trophy from the men's tournament. Um, when I was working at Indiana State, we gave out a Larry Bird one because we had a, a reunion. Um, so it kind of started that way of just, and I am a white, I'm a big White Sox fan. Yeah. And I've gone to games for, my entire life. And we've picked them up periodically. You know, my dad even has a few and, and, you know, so it started more that way. I, I do know people I I'm on some chats, chat rooms and blogs and things that, I mean, they are serious about it. The only money that I spend on these are a lot of times ones for the white socks that are done for charity. So the white socks have done one almost one or two a year, I think it's typically what they've done. And they've done a special bobblehead that you can only buy. They don't give it out at the gate. You can only buy it and it goes to charity. So those are really the only ones that I have bought. I don't... Now, there are, in my White Sox fandom side, there are a couple golden gooses out there. But to your point, I'm not willing to spend $350 on eBay for... Like, I'm just... (laughs) I got to pay going back. I got to pay for cheer competitions <laughs> and travel softball. I don't yeah. have time to spend $350 on a bobblehead. Um, but, you know, the other cool thing is I've, you know, I've obviously picked some up. I'm a big sports fan. So I've picked them up at games and I've picked them up at things. I've actually won some on like giveaways. Oh, okay. My newest one I got was just one of those like and retweet and we'll send it to you type things. Um, and there's several of them up there that I've gotten that way. Um and, you know, and then I, the cool part is going back to the relationships. I've had people send me some. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had, you know, a good friend of both of ours, Scott Warman, you know, picked up, picked up uh, Paul the Young one from the Springfield Cardinals that they had given out. Well, obviously, Paul's an ISU alum and, right. you know, the connection. So a couple of years ago when we hosted the NBC baseball tournament, Scotty brought that up for me and, and added it. And I've had, you know, friends that work in minor league baseball send them to me. And I've had friends that work at the Bulls and the Blackhawks send them to me. Former, you know, interns and people that yeah. I work with here that are now working up there. So I would say, I would say about half of them are, were sourced by me at games or garage sales or random <laughs> things like that. I'd say probably the other two thirds are, uh, are ones that people have sent to me. And then, uh, uh, and then the other third of that or whatever, I, I'm bad at math, but whatever the rest of that is, is, is ones that schools have done or, okay. or, or, or local places have done that I picked up. And it's, it's, there's some weird stuff in there. I mean, it's mostly, it's majority white socks, bulls, Blackhawks. There's a little bit of bears, but like there's a Jenny Finch one right there. I can see it. Um, that a, friend was cleaning out stuff in their basement, just gave it to me. You know, it's just, 
I have random ones that are like that. And then I do have, it's kind of hard to see, but that far side, you can't really see it. You can kind of see the Doug Collins one in there, but that's my Valley section. So I do have um, the Valley trophy that they gave out a couple of years ago. I have my Larry Bird one. I have uh, Sister Jean up there. And I have uh, the one I really adore is Paul Morrison. Okay. Uh, Great gave that one out. Uh, to commemorate Paul's 100th birthday, actually. And uh, I actually, when I first got into the business, knew, got to meet Paul. And was when I was traveling, and I'm sure you've met Paul or yep. met Paul um, in your time at the Valley. Just tremendous dude. And as a young guy who literally just got into the business to sit next to him at courtside when you're working a game at the Nap Center and just, just hear him tell stories was amazing. So, yep. I, I love that one. And people see it and they're like, what is that? You know, and I'm <laughs> telling that story because it all goes to the, to, to why I'm here. You know, if people yeah. like him and didn't, you know, take the time when I was a very, very young person in this business to take an interest in me or to answer my questions or talk to me um, or just make me feel like I belonged I, there's no way I'd still be here. And he didn't have to do that. He didn't know me. I was just some punk kid coming in from, in, you know, at the time it was Indiana State when I was coming in with basketball. And I'd been out of grad school for a year at the time. You know, he didn't have to be nice to me, yeah. but he was. Guys like Mark Stillwell yeah. and, and you know, Tom was in that was in that group for a long, long time. Um, those guys that had been working for 30 years at one school didn't have to be nice to me and don't have to be nice to this day to me. Um, but they did. So it's cool that you can form relationships with people, um, and just get, you know, a little connection. Now I'll tell you, they're only here because my wife won't allow them in the house. I was going to say, are there, I was, my next question was going to be, are there any at home? <laughs> no, there are none at home. There are zero at home and, and, uh, they're all, they're all here. So, and, you know, it's kind of fun because people come into the office and they're like, Oh, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get riffing about it. And, um, but how many, yeah, you it's have? How many do you have? It's over 70. I, okay. I, I that's not too many, but it's, it's over 70. And that's not too know, bad. The key problem here though, is that, you know, I do have friends that work at the white Sox and things like that. So just about every year now about the, you know, after the end of the baseball season, November, right before Christmas, I'll just have a random box show up and there'll be about four or five of them in the, uh, in the box. And then I'm like, Oh no. And some I already have, which is really depressing because when they come, but then I, I've got other white Sox fans and people I can yeah. give them around to, but, um, you know, it's, it's just fun. And I even have, I don't know if you know, Kevin trainer, but Kevin yeah. has worked on uh, committees with me with CSC and has become a good friend and mentor. Kevin knew I was a white Sox guy. Well, Arkansas had given out some bobbleheads at baseball. One of Dallas Keuchel, who was playing for the White Sox at the time. And the other one of Andrew Benetendi, who's now at the White Sox, he's now sent Arkansas ones to me because of the connection to the White Sox. I see, yeah. Seeing them on a Zoom call that we did for a CSC thing. So it's all about, you know, people think, you know, I have fun with it. You know, if they have, they all have some kind of connection. They yeah. all have a story. There's nothing really super, super random up there. Um, that I don't have some kind of a, a story or connection to. So it's kind of what's fun. your what's your favorite one? If you if if one if you had to get rid of them all, but you can only keep one, which one are you keeping? I have a I have a thought, but I'm not sure if I'm well, gonna well, be correct. One of them that I really enjoy is the James Robinson one that's up there. Okay. Um it, it was one that was done now. It's him in a Jaguars uniform. Um but it it was done by the folks at the Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum, oh, which I just okay. went to visit in Milwaukee when I was telling you about <laughs> Milwaukee, which was a blast. Um, <laughs> but they actually produced that and worked with us here at ISU to kind of help get the word out on that one. So I really like that one because obviously I saw every snap of James's okay. career when he was here. So that one, that one's pretty special. The Coach Spack one is great. I love that one. Um, one, because it's just spot on. It's perfect. It's probably one of the most lifelike and realistic ones of any of them that are up there. Um, and then I'd, I'd say the other one um, that I really have, there's a a Carlton Fisk one. He's my favorite player growing up. Um, and it was 
probably, if not the first, it was one of the first ones I ever got. Okay. And it doesn't look, the ones now are so lifelike and, yeah. and they're very well done. This one looks nothing like him. <laughs> it's got the really like big, big chunky head on it and the chunky body. Like it's, it's very different. It was probably done in the early to mid thousands. Um, so that's probably the, the oldest and probably the, the one that kind of started the whole craze. So I'd say those are probably some of my favorite ones. I was going to guess gonna either Coach Spack or Doug Collins. Doug Collins. So. Well, the Collins one's creepy. I, really? <laughs> it's, it, it doesn't really look like Doug. I love Doug. Um, and I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to, to be called, uh, you know, to be around him many, many, many times over his career here. But it's, it's not the best likeness um so i kind of i I bury it a little bit back <laughs> with some of the other ones i told them i was like one of these days with one of these new companies and how good the 3d renderings are of these things we need to do a, Get new, a new one yeah. one because that one is the bird one is spot on the bird one yeah. we did in indiana state is great but uh collins one has a little bit left to the imagination i think <laughs> that's, that's that's hilarious, that's hilarious. <laughs> this has been fun man i didn't realize you had so much uh in you to, to go, but I could go another 45 minutes with you, but wow. I know it's the middle of the workday. This has been super, super fun. Um, I guess if, if you don't mind, can you share with the folks uh, if they were interested, learn more, you know, about, you know, the business, working in college athletics, um, platforms you're on, how you, you know, if you want to share your, your social media connection, I know you're active on Twitter now X and whatever we're calling it now. So, yeah, no, I'm, I, that's the one part of this business that I've had to learn how to be good at. <laughs> not necessary. I was not an early adopter to even going back way back to Facebook. I was late to that game. Um, but no, I'm on all the social medias. You can usually find me ISU McWilly, uh, M C W I L L I. And it's funny because people do call me Willie now and they're like, why? I go with MC it's, Willie. It's, so, it's solely because of that email. <laughs> You know, ISU just that's how they make their emails. Yeah. It's your first in you know, it's your first name, first initial, middle initial, and then it's usually the first five letters of your last name. And they can kick it two or three if you're, you know, a pretty common name or something. But when I came back, it was Mick Willie and it just stuck. <laughs> it just stuck. So um I'm either Mike or I'm Willie, depending on how long you've known me or, or been around me. Uh Valley Valley staff, it's Willie. Uh, most of the staff here, it's Willie. Uh, most of the people I've worked with over the years, it's that. You talk to my fraternity brothers, it's a completely different name. I won't go into that. Um, different but, podcast. Uh, yeah, find me on all of those. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I'm, I'm always interacting with people and, and trying to help, um, you know, either current people that I work with or even some some young staff people I've been able to, through CSC's mentorship program, been able to get to news, uh, know some staff uh, from all around the country and try to help them out and, you know, pay it a little bit forward from from those guys that have go. been in the business a long time, like Tom and like Rick and, and you know, Mark and Tom LaMonica before him. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to do the same, although, I, you know, I, I don't, I still don't feel like I'm in those guys' leagues, even though I've been in their colleagues for 15 years, but you know, those guys have been institutions at their inst at their institutions, um, and have done such a great job. So I'm hoping to do that for some, some younger folks that are getting into the business and to impart whatever, uh, wisdom I can and, and tell them some things I've learned from some very interesting things that have happened in and around Illinois state athletics in the last 15 years. So, Hey, it's the experiences, the connections, and relationships. You nailed it. I think that probably sums up what, everything we've been talking about. So, um, hey, you're, you're well on your track. You you are, uh, like I said, you're definitely one of the people when I first got to the Valley, everyone was like, this guy knows what he's doing and and that kind of thing. So, and the promotion is well-deserved. Like I said, keep doing you, man. And and I'm, I'm super proud of uh, you getting that that title change and, and, and just you being you. So you've always been one of my favorites. I appreciate you taking time to do the podcast with me too. Well, thanks so much, Derek, and I feel the same way about you. We 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 miss you in the Valley, but uh, glad you're having so much success outside of college sports, and this podcast is awesome. Like I said, I've I've listened to several episodes, whether it be with people I, I knew or had common connections with or people I 
never heard of before, you know, so uh, keep doing the great work on the podcast. And I really appreciate you having me as part of it. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you, Derek. Thanks for listening to this episode of Persons of Interest. This podcast is a personal project with the goal of sharing stories that might inspire others to create their own path. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. If you have a guest suggestion, you can reach Derek on social media at ddocket. Thank you for listening to Persons of Interest.